do you want for Pentecost? No, really, what do you want for Pentecost? We expect gifts for Christmas, maybe even sometimes for Easter. But Pentecost is actually the only day in the church year where we're promised gifts. So what do you want for Pentecost? You have some choices. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, the power to heal and work wonders. Or would you rather be a prophet? That might be fun. Or maybe not, actually. Prophets don't tend to live easy lives. St. Paul tells us that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That sounds better. That I can work with. What happened on that first Pentecost morning? Tongues as of fire descended on the disciples, we're told, and they spoke in many languages. Some of those watching and listening understood what was said with piercing clarity. Others thought the disciples were drunk, even if it was only nine o'clock in the morning. Pentecost turns the world inside out and upside down. It's scary and overwhelming. Or maybe not. Maybe Pentecost is the time when we see the world as it really is, infused with the Spirit, if we only look, if we only listen. When I was in seminary, I spent a summer working as a hospital chaplain. One of my colleagues was a Pentecostal pastor named Bruce. At least on the surface, he and I had very little in common. He was a retired firefighter and a fiery Pentecostal preacher. I was a lawyer and a rather uptight Episcopalian who occasionally added footnotes to her sermons. We had little in common, but we got along pretty well. Although you might not have known that if you wandered into one of our debates. We would get into these long, crazy arguments over lunch, mostly about the church. I'm a lot of fun at parties. Bruce was convinced that preachers had to trust in the Holy Spirit. A preacher shouldn't prepare too much and definitely shouldn't write out a manuscript. A sermon written ahead of time isn't really a sermon, he'd say. It's an essay at best. And he couldn't understand our calendar and lectionary. How can the Spirit guide the church if you're tied to preaching on readings selected years or even decades ahead of time? And prayer, of course, had to be extemporaneous from the heart following the Spirit's lead. I argued back. I argued that the Spirit can inspire the writing of a sermon just as well as its delivery, thank you very much, and is present with the listeners who time and again hear what they need to hear, even when it isn't exactly what the preacher intended to say. I said that leaving the choice of scripture up to the preacher makes it all too easy to proof text, to find what you want to find, rather than facing up to the inconvenient bits of the Bible. Following a set lectionary keeps the preacher honest. And as far as written prayers are concerned, the old prayers of the church are tested by time. They survive because they speak to the needs of our hearts in a way that we're not, not likely to be able to improve upon on the fly. That, too, is the work of the Spirit. I don't think either of us managed to convince the other. I'm still a fan of the lectionary, and I'll fight you for my sermon manuscript. You can ask Father James about that sometimes. I still love the ancient prayers of our prayer book. Bruce's arguments didn't change my mind, and I'm quite certain 
that he is still preaching and praying from the heart, trusting the Spirit to guide his words. I didn't change his mind any more than he changed mine. But I think we both realized that we each had a piece of the truth. The Holy Spirit can be wild, unpredictable. The Spirit can burn like fire, burn away all that's false with searing tongues of flame. The Spirit can also be quiet, subtle, gentle, nudging us in ways we might not even recognize until years after the fact. We both realized that we each had a piece of the truth. And more importantly, I think, we came to understand each other a little bit better. Understanding, too, is the work of the Spirit. Understanding, too, is the work of Pentecost. I love our tradition of reading the Gospel in as many languages as possible on this day. It's a lot of fun, and I'm glad we were able to continue it this year. But the noisy chaos of voices gets one very important thing wrong. On that first Pentecost, the miracle wasn't just that multiple languages were spoken. The miracle was that everyone understood what was said. Our attempt at imitation misses that clarity, that understanding. So what do you want for Pentecost? As I look at the world around us, I know what I want for all of us. I want the spirit of understanding. I want the spirit that led the disciples to speak in the native languages of those around them. I want the spirit of patience and generosity that enabled them to listen to one another. I want the spirit of courage that gave them the strength to go out into the world to proclaim the gospel in ways that all could comprehend. It's becoming easier and easier to understand foreign languages. I can ask my phone to translate almost any language into English, and it'll get it pretty much right. But it seems it's becoming harder every day to understand the people next door. We've divided ourselves into silos. We've put up walls of politics, nationality, race, religion, wealth, and we're incre increasingly afraid to talk across those walls. We probably each think that our own worldview is mostly right. I know I do. Humility has to sneak in around the margins if it comes in at all. But the task of listening for and through the Holy Spirit is at least in part to consider the possibility that you might not have the whole picture that you might not fully understand the dreams and hopes and fears of your neighbors. The task of listening for and through the Holy Spirit is to hear strange words and to ask, what does this mean? Rather than to assume that those who speak are filled with new wine or simply out of their minds. And so on this Pentecost, my prayer is this. May we be filled with the Holy Spirit. May we speak with wisdom and listen with humility. And against all odds, may we come to understand one another. What do you want for Pentecost?